Here are the top stories for today, March 8, 2021. More healthcare workers receive their first dose of Sinovac as the government ramps up its vaccination drive in the country. Balancing health and local economy, some provinces relaxes its travel restrictions but with more stringent health precautions. President Duterte ordered to fast-track land distribution in areas that remain hotbeds for communist insurgency. And in celebration of International Women's Day, a Filipina proves that there is an environment-friendly and fragrant opportunity in every adversity. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Vaccine rollout continues in other parts of the country, which started over the weekend. Medical frontliners who received their first jabs are relieved to know that they are now protected against the dreaded disease. The details from Chris Crismundo. In Bataan, COVID-19 vaccination for medical frontliners started today as the provincial government received 417 doses of Sinovac vaccine from the Department of Health. Governor Albert Garcia said this was only the first batch of the vaccines out of the 2,680 doses allocated for the province and more will arrive in the next few days. In Bulacan, some 833 health workers of Bulacan Medical Center and the district hospitals in the province also received their first dose of Sinovac vaccine. The Department of Health allocated 900 vials for the province. In Palawan, the local government also started inoculating its 698 hospital workers yesterday. Dr. Melesho D, Medical Center Chief of the Hospital ng Palawan, became the first frontliner in the city to receive the jab. Puerto Princesa in the province of Palawan's share of 5,260 anti-COVID-19 vaccines for the frontliners were transported to the city last Friday, escorted by Executive Secretary Salvador Medialdea via a Philippine Air Force aircraft. It will also be distributed to other hospitals such as the Adventist Hospital Palawan, MMG PPC Cooperative Hospital, and the Military Hospital inside the Western Command Headquarters. In Sarangani, healthcare workers also started receiving the Sinovac vaccine on Sunday, making them the first in Region 12 to be inoculated against COVID-19. Dr. Eileen Brion, Chief of the Sarangani Health Care Facility, and Dr. Arvin Alejandro, Acting Provincial Health Officer, were the first to receive the initial doses of the vaccine. The Provincial Health Office targeted a total of 336 local health care workers as priorities for the Sinovac inoculation. Nearly 9,000 frontline health workers in 23 COVID-19 referral hospitals in the region are also targeted to get the Sinovac vaccine in the next seven days. In Agusan del Norte, inoculation starts today for more than 300 healthcare workers in the province. The province has an initial allocation of 378 CoronaVac vaccines. In Surigao del Sur, COVID-19 vaccination starts today at the Adela Serra T. Memorial Medical Center in Tandag City. Among those who receive their first dose of Sinovac vaccine are medical specialist 2, Dr. Voltaire Ignora, head of anesthesiology department, Dr. Joshua Daniel de la Cruz, and nurse supervisor Alma Trinidad. Governor Alexander Pimentel witnessed the rollout of the vaccination program in the province. In South Cotabato, vaccine advocate Dr. Brian Non of the South Cotabato Provincial Hospital received his first Sinovac jab this morning. Dr. Non is urging his fellow frontline health care workers to also get vaccinated as it is guaranteed safe and will give them enough protection against COVID-19. In Ilocos Norte, a total of 2,446 doses of Sinovac were allocated and administered to the different frontline healthcare workers in the region. 
top doctors took the lead in receiving Sinovac shots on Saturday in the hope of boosting the people's confidence in the vaccine. Dr. Norman Rabago, Ilocos Norte vaccination head, and Dr. Walberg Samonte, medical director of the Governor Roque B. Ablan Senior Memorial Hospital, volunteered to be injected in public to set as an example to the 87 potential vaccinees who registered in the hospital. The ceremonial vaccination rollout was witnessed by some employees of the city government led by Mayor Michael Keon and 61 other healthcare worker vaccinees of the hospital. In Olongapo City, a total of 538 vials of Sinovac vaccines arrived on Saturday at the James Gordon Memorial Hospital. These were administered to some 100 medical workers yesterday, including its hospital chief, Dr. Jewel Manuel. Meanwhile, the head of Cagayan Valley Medical Center, or CVMC, received his first dose of Sinovac yesterday. Dr. Glenn Matthew Bagao said he willingly took the first jab to erase doubts on the efficacy of the vaccine. Cagayan Valley received 10,800 doses of CoronaVac on Friday. Among their priorities are the healthcare workers of COVID-19 referral hospitals in Cagayan Valley such as CVMC in Cagayan Province, Southern Isabella Medical Center in Isabela, and Region 2 Trauma and Medical Center in Nueva Vizcaya. And in North Cotabato, healthcare frontliners received their first Sinovac shot yesterday. The province received 441 vaccines, which are safely stored in a facility within the Provincial Health Hospital compound. Governor Nancy Catamco said, succeeding vaccine deliveries will be for the next-level recipients like senior citizens and other sectors vulnerable to the disease. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Chris Crismundo. While the country is ramping up its efforts to vaccinate more healthcare workers in the country, an additional 38,000 doses of AstraZeneca vaccines from Amsterdam arrived last night. The delivery came at around 7 p.m. via a KLM Asia flight. Vaccine czar Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. said this completed the 525,600 doses secured by the national government from the COVAX facility. The vaccines are immediately deployed to high-risk communities. Galvez said around 4.5 million doses of AstraZeneca vaccines through the COVAX facility will be delivered until May. Meanwhile, another 1.4 million doses of CoronaVac vaccines will also arrive this month. Galvez said the government has already processed the required documents for the arrival of the vaccines produced by China's Sinovac Biotech Pharmaceutical Company. Moreover, Moderna has signed a supply agreement with the Philippines for 13 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccine that will arrive by the third quarter of this year. The Philippine government and private sector are also working out a deal for an additional 7 million doses. According to the World Health Organization, Moderna vaccine has an efficacy of approximately 92% against COVID-19 starting from 14 days after the first dose. In a bid to balance their local economy, more provinces eased up their travel protocols. However, minimum health protocols will be strictly monitored to ensure the safety of the people. The details from Marita Muay. In Lapu-Lapu City, Cebu, all travel restrictions to enter the island have been removed. The city has been home to Cebu's airport and posh resorts. The city no longer requires a letter of acceptance, travel endorsements, a travel authority issued by the Joint Task Force Shield, medical certificate and swab test from domestic travelers. But while the city relaxes its travel restrictions, it strictly implements the minimum health protocols, such as wearing a face mask and face shields, observing social distancing and adhering to 50% capacity limitations. Violators will have to pay a fine of 1,000 pesos or do community service. In Ilocos Norte, mandatory quarantine is no longer required for returning residents as long as there are no symptoms. 
However, proof of acceptance from the destination and a negative COVID-19 test result must still be shown at checkpoints, especially for those who are coming from areas under enhanced or general community quarantine. Governor Matthew Joseph Manotok said loosening of border and quarantine protocols is a risky decision, but he has to find balance with the ongoing situation. He also directed the immediate release of all quarantined individuals once they test negative for the virus. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Marita Muahe. The ongoing vaccine rollout must not be a reason to be complacent. Vaccine Czar Secretary Vince Dizon stressed that we still have to be vigilant and that contact tracing has to be intensified. What we have to all understand, okay, kaya maintindihan natin na hindi porket nagsimula na tayo ng pagbabakuna, eh ito na ang solusyon natin, hindi po. Prevention, detection, isolation, treatment, tuloy-tuloy pa, pa rin pa po yun, no? Ang uh, rini-review po namin ngayon yung mga desisyon na nagawa ng mga nakaraang linggo dahil meron pong malaking pagkakaiba no? nung ginawa yung mga desisyon na yon na magluluwag tayo ng konti. No? Ang kaso po natin nung nagawa yung mga desisyon na yon ay 1,500 lang. Ngayon po ay lampas 3,000 na. So kailangan po flexible tayo, re-reviewin po natin yan at kailangan nating uh, sabayan kung anumang intervention katulad ng mga localized or very uh, small lockdowns. Kunyari, street lockdown, barangay lockdown, etc. Government officials and health experts reminded the public to exercise extraordinary diligence in getting tested for COVID-19. Senator Richard Gordon, who is also the chairman of the Philippine Red Cross, emphasized the importance of continuously testing, tracing, and treating the virus amid reports that 8 out of 10 COVID-19 cases are asymptomatic. COVID-19 testing czar Vince Dizon also stressed the need to be tested and treated as he cited the increasing local cases of COVID-19 variants. Still to come, President Duterte encouraged everyone to participate in the month-long celebration of the Women's Month. And the country remains hopeful that the next trade and investment dialogue with China will commence this year. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. Alamin kung paano ang tamang pagsusuot ng surgical mask. Una, hawakan ang mask sa strap at siguruhin natatakpan nito ang inyong bibig at ilong. Tandaan, ang may kulay na bahagi ng mask ang dapat nasa labas. Ito lamang ang tamang paraan ng pagsuot nito. Ihulma ang nose piece o maliit na metallic strip ayon sa hugis ng inyong ilong. Iwasan ang paghawak sa inyong ilong at bibig. Kung marumi na ang mask, hubarin nito gamit ang strap at itapon nito sa isang basurahan. Siguruhin ang maayos na paghuhugas ng kamay gamit ang sabon at tubig. Ang surgical mask ay dapat gamitin ng mga pasyenteng may sakit sa baga o mga taong mayroong ubo, sipon at lagnat, mga nag-aalaga sa mga may sakit, at mga healthcare at frontline workers. Maaari ring magsuot nito kung kayo ay pupunta sa matataong lugar. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to! Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP, at nang himpilang ito. President Rodrigo Duterte calls for the empowerment of women for them to prove their potential and have their own place in society. In his Women's Month message this Monday, Duterte raised the need to stop the old beliefs towards women that promote gender oppression and inequality. He said the government is doing its part to give women respect and fair and equal treatment and recognize their contributions to society. The president called on all Filipinos to celebrate the indispensable role of women in the country's progress. The Presidential Task Force on Media Security has directed the Philippine National Police to intensify its manhunt for Dante Encarnacion Tabusares, the primary suspect in the murder of broadcaster Eduardo Sanchez Dizon in Kidapawan City. PT Farms Executive Director Joel C. Egko ordered the creation of special tracker teams to speed up the capture of Tabusares along with co-accused Junel Poten. 
Cabusares has reportedly joined the terrorist CPP-NPA in Arakan, North Cotabato, to evade arrest. Egko said the fugitive is able to make public statements in social media, meaning he is protected by some unscrupulous people. Tabusares allegedly masterminded the killing of Dizon, who was critical of the Kappa Community Ministry International's investment scheme prior to his death. Dizon, a former councillor of Makilala, North Cotabato, was a block-time host of the local Brigada News when he was murdered on July 10, 2019. The Department of the Interior and Local Government on Sunday slammed the opposition of the so-called Makabayan Bloc in Congress to the economic amendments in the 1987 Philippine Constitution. DILG spokesperson and Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya said the bloc's opposition is based on an outdated economic model that would lead to higher unemployment and suffering of the people. He said this model has been discarded by all nations in favor of the free market model. Malaya also said the bloc adheres to the National Industrialization Program where major industries are taken over by the state. This is contained in the proposed Comprehensive Agreement on Social and Economic Reform or CASER which was pushed by the CPP, NPA, NDF in the collapse peace talks with the government. Given the impact of the pandemic to the Philippine economy, Malaya said economic amendments are necessary for the country to begin the road to recovery. In our business news, Trade Secretary Ramon Lopez said they are hopeful to convene the next trade and investment dialogue with China this year, four years after their last discussion in 2017. Lopez is looking forward to strengthening economic ties between the Philippines and China through the 29th Philippines-China Joint Commission on Economic and Technical Cooperation or JCETC. Citing data from the Chinese Ministry of Commerce, Lopez said project contracts signed by Chinese enterprises in the Philippines rose 27.9% over the last three years. In 2019, newly signed contracts surged by 102% to 6.4 billion US dollars and reached 9.59 billion dollars last year during the 28th JCETC held here in March 2017. Lopez and Chinese Minister of Commerce Zong Shan agreed on a six-year development program for economic and trade cooperation, which served as the framework of economic relations between Manila and Beijing until 2022. Up next, President Duterte to speed up land distribution in areas that remain hotbeds for communist insurgency. And in celebration of International Women's Day, a Filipina proves that there is an environment-friendly and fragrant opportunity in every adversity. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Alamin ang tamang paraan ng pag-ubo upang mapigilan ang paglaganap ng coronavirus disease 2019. Ugaliing magdala ng panyo o tissue. Kung uubo o babahing, takpan ang buong ilong at bibig gamit ang panyo o tissue. Kung walang dalang panyo o tissue, maaaring gamitin ang braso na pantakip. Kung nakararamdam na kailangan umubo o bumahing, agad na dumistansya sa mga tao sa paligid. Huwag dumura kung saan-saan, gumamit ng tissue at itapon sa basurahan. Ugaliin ang paghuhugas ng kamay at paggamit ng alcohol o hand sanitizer upang mamatay ang mikrobyo. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. You're still watching the PNA Newsroom. President Rodrigo Duterte wants the Department of Agrarian Reform to speed up land distribution in areas that remain hotbeds for communist insurgency. 
President Duterte said 450,000 hectares of land are up for distribution based on the report of Agrarian Reform Secretary John Castrichones. The government has distributed more than 2,100 hectares in northern Mindanao alone. Apart from land, farmer beneficiaries are expected to receive fertilizer and seedlings from the government. Duterte also made renewed offer to the rebels for a local peace dialogue. For those who want to return to the fold of the law, President Rodrigo Duterte said his government is ready to provide them with shelter and livelihood. The Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, or TESDA, will extend skills training to rebel returnees. Government troops rescued a communist New People's Army combatant who fled from his group in Surigao del Norte on Friday. The army said the rebel decided to leave the group because he is already tired of the promises made to him by the NPA. Soldiers sent to say the rebel ran into several NPA combatants believed to be chasing the SKP. The encounter lasted for about 10 minutes before the NPA rebels retreated from their position. The rebel, who was not named for security reasons, turned in an M14 rifle with seven magazines, 21 live ammunition, and a bandolier. The army said the escape of the NPA rebel showed the disintegration among the ranks of the rebels in the area. He is now under the custody of the 30th Infantry Battalion. The Department of Tourism, or DOT, has expressed support for sustainable development in Coron, Palawan to draw more visitors and hasten tourism recovery. The DOT is boosting its recovery plan for Coron through the Sustainable Tourism Development Project, or STDP, which will be launched this year and will run throughout 2026. Among its components are the restoration of four key ecotourism sites, capacity building for marine protected area management, and alternative livelihood. These include Kayangan Lake, Siete Pecados, Bintuan Coral Gardens, and the CYC Beach. Often cited in many lists of top dive spots in the world, Coron's main draw is the World War II Japanese wrecks as well as the other fun dive spots. It is home to Kayangan Lake, advertised as the cleanest lake in the country. Coron has attracted some 2,900 visitors since it reopened on December 1, 2020. In sports, Filipina Japanese golfer Yuka Sasso will headline this year's Philippine Sports Writers Association Awards. In a statement, the PSA said the 19-year-old Sasso inspired more than 100 million Filipinos at a time when local sports took a severe beating from COVID-19. Sasso won two Ladies Professional Golf Association titles in Japan and finished 13th overall in the U.S. Open. She ended the year at number 45 in the world rankings. This will be Sasso's second Athlete of the Year award, having won the 2019 edition alongside fellow golfers Bianca Pagdanganan and Lois K. Go and weightlifter Heidelin Diaz for their 2018 Asian Games gold. The PSA Awards will be done virtually on March 27. The world pays tribute to the role of women in all aspects of society and global development. In celebration of International Women's Day, a Filipina proves that there is an environment-friendly and fragrant opportunity in every adversity. For Angelica Chonko, maintaining personal hygiene and grooming does not have to be at the expense of destroying the environment. From being a mere solution to her daughter's skin problem, Chonko's own brand of organic shampoo known as Mayumi Organics is now making a name for itself as a business that contributes to environmental protection. Chonko got her big break in 2017 when her brand supplied organic soap as souvenirs for delegates and attendees of the ASEAN Summit hosted by the country. In 2018, Mayumi Organics was among the first brands to introduce locally made shampoo bars and other products which diverted from the Filipino sachet culture. For Chonko, a burning passion coupled with a desire to help save the environment was what made her rise above life's challenges.
Here's another look at today's biggest stories. More healthcare workers received their first dose of Sinovac as the government ramps up its vaccination drive in the country. Balancing health and local economy, some provinces relaxes its travel restrictions but with more stringent health precautions. President Duterte ordered to fast-track land distribution in areas that remain hotbeds for communist insurgency. And in celebration of International Women's Day, a Filipina proves that there is an environment-friendly and fragrant opportunity in every adversity. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check more news content, visit our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, we tell stories that inspire change. I am William Theo. Good day, stay safe to all, and happy Monday.